hope you're having a great day. <clears throat> it looks like the monsoons are finally setting into Goa, something I've been waiting for. I love the rains, I love thunderstorms, so hoping we get a lot of that back here. I want to talk today about fasting. A lot of people over the last couple of days have been sending me links of uh, certain videos saying that fasting causes harm to the human body and that fasting isn't good for menopause, it isn't good for hormonal health. So it's not about who's right or wrong. It's about how you think, how you take information and not react to it, how you add a little bit of vitamin C to that information that you consume, a little bit of rationale and a little bit of science. Let's talk about fasting in detail. Number one, fasting isn't a trend. It isn't a diet. It's not a way of living. If I have my dinner at eight o'clock at night, and I eat my breakfast, for example, if I eat breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning, I have a 12 hour gap. That is fasting. If I finish my lunch at two o'clock in the afternoon and my next meal is at six o'clock in the evening, that keeps a gap of four hours. I'm fasting. Now, what you need to do today to make sense in a world that is full of more and more information that confuses you, you're obviously confused because there's too much of information out there. You don't know who to listen to. You can learn from many people, but finally you are responsible for making the decision when it comes to all of this. So let's break down fasting, okay? Who, who said, who came up with 16.8? Who, which culture? Where did 16.8 come from? Did you ever question it? Why not 16 and a half? Why not 15 and a half? Why not 17? Why not 14? No, we didn't because we're influenced by trends. We want to put ourselves into boxes and behave out of those boxes. Now, some people in a box of 16, eight, maybe it works for them, but does it have to work for you? Absolutely not. Some people's bodies do well on longer fasts. They get results that they seek. Some bodies do better on shorter fasts. They still get results. What is the point I'm trying to make when it comes to you understanding fasting without fear is you are a unique bio individual. A 20 hour fast may suit your friend, but you may get the same results or better results in 14 hours. How do you know how much of fasting is right for you? By trying. Now let's break down fasting into detail. Yes, extreme fasts can derail certain people's hormonal health. Hormonal health doesn't get disrupted with fasting alone. Someone who's very stressed out has adrenal fatigue, very bad thyroid health, which signifies poor endocrine health, poor metabolic health. And they are trying to do extended fasts, HIIT workouts. It's too much a burden on the body. Fasting can harm them, but can they still fast? Absolutely. Yes. The same way, like they can still work out. Maybe they don't do high interval training. Maybe they become consistent with body weight training, light weight training, slowly progressing walks, interval runs, very gentle exercise, but consistent. The right amount of protein and macros on their plates and fasting that does not aggravate hormonal imbalance. At the same time, someone who's metabolically fit, hitting perimenopause, premenopause, can fast for 17 or 18 hours and they have absolutely no problem. The point is stop being influenced by people. You need to be inspired and empowered with enough of information, knowledge and science to decide what is right for you. I fast, I've been fasting for years. If you ask me, Luke, how many hours do you fast? I don't have an answer. Yesterday it was 14 hours. Last Sunday it was 21 hours. Another day it was 12 hours. I don't decide how much I want to fast. My body decides that. My body decides and your body decides how much you need to fast based on so many factors. Your age, the kind of work that you do, physical work, mental work, the kind of workouts that you're doing, your sleep, your circadian rhythms, so much plays a role in determining how much you fast. But most people want to put themselves into a box that social media is defined or some scientist is defined you can't be in a box right then when you're in a box, everything is going to go wrong for you. You may be one of those lucky two or three people who fit into the box and it's working for you. Great job. Continue being in that box because it's working for you. 
But if it isn't, don't do it. Of course, there are certain patients who shouldn't fast. All of our post-transplant patients, they can't fast for at least three to four months. You've got to slowly take them from eight hours to 10 hours to 11 hours or 12 hours while their body gets used to a new organ and the immunosuppressant drugs that they're on. Certain diabetics, even though smart fasting will reverse your type 2 diabetes along with lifestyle changes, certain diabetics can't jump into fasting. They got to ease into it because they, they have such poorly managed diabetic levels that there is too much of fluctuation between the lows and highs. Plus, they have poor lifestyle to add to that. So they need to ease into it. You've got to train their bodies into fasting from eight hours and then 10 hours, correct their sugar levels, then 11 to 12. And absolutely, diabetics can fast, but the right way. We need to understand, even, even in, in the world of cancer today, doctors are recognizing fasted chemotherapy versus people who eat heavy meals and come for chemotherapy. But this doesn't have to suit everyone. There are some patients who are not hungry before chemotherapy, and they do a fasted chemotherapy with fabulous results, literally no side effects. Some people, because of fear of chemotherapy, you know, many different reasons, they need to eat before chemotherapy. And they choose to, and they choose to manage the side effects post that. Everyone is different. You need to get out of the box you've put yourself in because of what you watch, what you listen to, and how you constantly want instant gratification and quick fixes. It doesn't work. There is no quick fix to help. There is no quick fix to recovery, prevention. It takes time, patience, and consistency. Now, coming back to fasting, what is the best way to fast? What are the most effective ways of fasting? According to the cycles of nature, your circadian rhythm. So if you look, there are many religions around the world, one such as Jainism. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Jainism. All right? You start fasting at sunset. No food, no water. You break your fast after sunrise. 12 hours of beautiful fasting as per light and dark, your circadian rhythm. Believe me, this fasting is way more powerful than people who do 20-hour fasts, but one day they start at 1 in the morning, the next day they start at 10 at night. It's all over. They don't have a rhythm. Fasting works beautifully with a rhythm because then you can determine your eating phase and your fasting phase. You can't keep confusing your body. Now, let's say you can't do 6 o'clock in the evening. It's not practical. That's okay. Can you do 7? The point is, can you start your fast earlier than later? Because you align with a rhythm. When you do this kind of fast, you will find you get the same results in lesser time rather than have to push yourself to do more. If your body allows you to do more, it's absolutely fine. But the point is, your body works with rhythms. Put your hand on your chest, there's a rhythm, your heartbeat. Put your hands under your nostril, there's a rhythm of your breath your pulse rate, everything is rhythm. But we as human beings think that we can break the rhythms of sleep, the rhythms of eating, and we confuse our body and then we think we're fasting. Or we think we can fast on black coffee. Of course, of course the Western culture, and I will say the Western culture right here, will tell you you can do it. Who fasts on a stimulant? Anyone can fast on a stimulant because coffee suppresses the appetite. The point is, it's not about the number of hours you get of fasting. It is the quality of your fast that matters. Fasting on a stimulant, fasting with higher cortisol levels and adrenaline levels, of course, you'll be able to now compare and say, I did 16, I did 18. You may think you're fasting, and maybe you are. It's not true fasting. It's not about quantity. Certain cultures around the world have driven us to think in a box. Everything is quantity, 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 and we've forgotten about quality. The point is, if you can fast only 10 hours, do it the right way. Then build to 11, then build to 12. Anyone can have two cups of coffee and extend their fast because coffee suppresses the appetite. But are you fasting because of that reason? Or are you fasting because you want to operate on cellular energy? The point is, do the fast the right way or don't do it at all. Number one, the quality of the coffee you're consuming is highly questionable. Most people, most people will not even invest in quality coffee for the right reasons because it's super expensive. Some people will, but most people have trash coffee every day. Trash coffee that is either too acidic, roasted so much that the 
quality of your coffee beans and your coffee is now questionable. So you're trying to fast to clean up your body and to build health, but you're putting crap into an empty system. The point is, cut down your hours, but you either fast on water or without water. No tea, no coffee, no lemon water, nothing. Or don't do it. Slowly build up. Eight hours, nine hours. Everything happens with practice. You want to become good at the piano? How do you get good at the piano? You practice and you practice and practice. You want to get good at anything in life? You practice. You train the human body and mind. But when you're constantly comparing and consuming crap content from people trying to put you into a box, they may have a point with their knowledge, but putting you into a box when you're different, question that. How can you be put into a box? You have people giving you relationship advice, how to love. Can you put the heart and emotions of a heart in a box? Absolutely no. And that's why you're more frustrated. People are telling you how to parent your children by putting you into a box. It doesn't work. Your child is different. You're different. Your environment is different. So when it comes to fasting, understand the human body works on survival mode. If it is hungry, it will give you a signal. Hunger is your best signal. Now, how do you determine today how much you should be fasting? Your average. My average is anywhere between 12 to 14 hours. Once in two weeks, I may want to do a 24 hour fast, depending on my workouts, depending on my recovery, depending on my goals. Every day is different. Here's how you start. Today, finish your dinner at 7, 7.30, 8, earlier if you want, okay? Tomorrow morning, when you're truly physically hungry, not emotionally hungry, not hungry out of habit, wait for the hunger to hit you and wait for 10 minutes more. Maybe it's 12 hours. Maybe it's 13 hours. Great job. You fasted. Do it the next day without having to push yourself. Don't be scared. Remember, you will have the power to stop the fast whenever you want. Don't be fearful of it. See how you feel. When you're fasting the right way, your energy levels will be high. You will be powered on energy. If you're fasting the wrong way, you'll be getting headaches and all of that stuff, which can come up initially in your fast because you're not used to it. Don't be scared of it. If your blood sugar levels are dropping, your pressure's all over the place, slow it down. But practice through self-realization and self-action. Only you will know how much you can fast. I can't tell you how much you should fast. No one can tell you how much you can fast. How can anyone when we're so bio-individually different? So the point is start with that. Don't be scared. Know that if you're hungry in nine hours, break it. You try tomorrow, maybe it, be, it will be 10 hours and then maybe 11 hours. The point is if you're on certain medications, all of that, keep your professionals in the loop because certain medications have to be taken with food at a particular time. Use common sense. I encourage you to use common sense. When I say this, don't think that I'm saying it in a derogatory way that we're dumb. No, but a lot of times we act dumb. Okay, we're not dumb, but we act dumb. With a little common sense, we understand that, hey, my body's different from this person. How can I imitate and ape that person's diet or lifestyle? Well, maybe I can try and figure out what works for my body type. So now coming back, how long do you need to fast? People will say, oh, you reverse aging with a 32 hour fast, all of that stuff. Yeah, start slow. If you reach 32 hours, it suits you, it's working for you, do it. But the point is consistency. The point is, are you giving your digestive system a break to recover, to replenish, for your microbiome to operate the right way, for rejuvenation of your cells, to bring down inflammation, to train your immune system to be smarter? All of that can happen in 12 hours, 13, 14, 15, 16. You want the extreme results? You do extreme fasts. You can do it. I don't have a problem with that. Number one, ask yourself, why am I doing it? Two, do I need it? Three, is it safe? Four, am I doing it the right way? Don't do it because you have FOMO. You have no idea how FOMO is destroying this generation and the generations below us, creating insecurity, the want for attention and validation. You have your own body. You have your own mind. Use your mind to make your decision. 12 hours suit me. I feel fantastic. Do 12 hours consistently. 14 hours work, do 14 hours. It should suit you and you should do it the right way. Hunger is your best signal. The third thing, oh look, I'm fasting but I'm not losing weight. Whoever told you that fasting was a weight loss mechanism? It isn't. It's for your metabolic rate. And if you're consistent and you're fasting the right way, 
Of course, you forget about losing weight. You will burn fat. Because in your fasting period, you're going to allow that key called insulin to come down. And only when insulin is at a certain level can it unlock your fat cells to burn fat. Which is why diabetics on insulin find it very difficult to burn fat because their insulin levels never come down low enough for their exercise to work or their diets to work. But the point is with fasting, you can create those gaps between your meals and between your last meal and your first meal the next day. Now let's break it down. Some children are hungry in the morning. Some children are not hungry in the morning. Everyone's different. Hungry children should eat if they're physically hungry. Children who are not hungry should not be force fed. The same thing with adults. Just because people say, oh, breakfast is the worst meal, all of that. There are some bodies. I can start fasting at four in the afternoon. That's my body type, but I need breakfast. Some people don't need breakfast. They can start with lunch as their first meal and their last meal at eight o'clock in the evening. You need to find what works for you, not what other people are doing. So if your body needs breakfast in the morning because your work requires that, I'm seeing back-to-back -back patients, my body is carb efficient in the morning, some days, and some days carb efficient at night, depending on my work, my travel, and my meals and workouts. The point is, don't let anyone put you into a bucket or into a box. If you are physically hungry, start fasting earlier in the evening. If you're not hungry till 11, 12, and your first meal is your lunch or your brunch, you can start fasting a little bit later. But you find your rhythm, and I can guarantee you, this kind of fasting will never harm you. Never harm you. Now, malnourished people, people with leaky gut syndromes and not absorbing nutrients and stuff and losing weight, you've got a smart fast, obviously, because over here you're trying to put on weight. You can still keep gaps between your meals, maybe shorter gaps, four hours, three and a half, five. Maybe a long fast is obviously not going to make common sense for you to do. But only you can decide how to use this marvelous intelligent body to fit in the right fasting. So can anyone say fasting is bad for hormones? Absolutely no. And yes, it is bad for your hormones if you have all the other lifestyle issues and you're not fasting the right way. It can be great for your hormones when you're doing it the right way. Can fasting be great for cancer? It can be therapeutic for cancer when done the right way at the right time. And likewise for diabetes and every other disease. The reason today, question everyone, I want you to reflect. There is so much of information that seems it's possible to change human health. And yet we are the sickest at this point in the world. Why? Most people are operating out of boxes. The information is right. The action is wrong. Take information, learn. We're constantly learning. What I learned nine years ago is completely changed today. And we're changing it all the time through learning. But the one thing we never change is the fact that every patient is a bio individual and they will require a bio individual approach. I can't take all my weight loss clients and put them into a low carb bucket. It's going to work for some and it's not going to work for others. I can't take all my autoimmune patients and put them in a carnivore bucket. It will work for many, but it doesn't have to work for all. The point is, remember bio-individuality. So now when it comes to fasting, start small. Start small, listen to the body. You get the best signals of the intelligence. When you're sick, your appetite automatically cuts. Automatically, you're not meant to eat. The body wants you to fast. When you're overeating all the time, you'll wanna eat more and more. You will find it difficult to fast. When your body's energy source is carbohydrates and sugar and junk, it's going to be very difficult for you to fast because you're creating cravings because of fluctuating blood sugar levels. But when your body's getting real energy from real food, you'll find it easy to fast. Longer gaps between meals without getting acidic, longer fasts become automatically possible. Find your rhythm. Fasting is therapeutic for everything at the right time, done the right way. So fasting cannot cause you harm. It's an inbuilt mechanism in the human body. Go back to evolution. There was feasting and fasting because food was scarce. The human body could fast for a long time. We can still fast, but food is abundant right now. And that's the biggest problem. I can guarantee you, you start fasting, okay? The way I told you to fast, start with eight hours, nine, 10, 11. Try to reach 12, be consistent for 12. Listen to your body, not to what anyone's saying or what people are doing around you. See what's working for you. My energy level's good. 
Are my cravings for sugar and junk coming down? That's another great sign that you're fasting well. Some people fast and then they binge in the eating phase because they were starving, they were not fasting. You start doing these things and I can guarantee, there are not many things I can guarantee in life, but I can guarantee you that today too many people are eating more than required, snacking when they don't need to snack, overconsumption of food and all of these things. Just get back to these little fasts in between, nothing, nothing spectacular. And then, once you realize the change for yourself, you already started doing fasting. Forget the word intermittent fasting, okay? Fasting is intermittent, it's intermittent between meals. Just call it smart fasting. Dry if you're not doing water, wet if you're doing it with, with water. Try doing it without stimulants. Just understand, it's common sense. Coffee is a stimulant. It works by boosting cortisol which is a good hormone, but it's also a stress hormone. Why would you want to boost cortisol in the morning when you wake up and your cortisol levels are naturally high? You don't need to do that. Fast. If you need coffee to keep your fast going, break your fast at that point. Get better, naturally. Do not do it the caffeine way. Anyone can do it. And that's the point. Certain cultures are driven into shortcuts and instant gratification. The point is you don't want to be that. You can be better than that. And start off with small fast, but quality fast. And I can guarantee you, you're going to feel amazing. Today we have people in the desperation to lose weight, having four or five cups of coffee in a fasted state to cut appetite and brag on social media that they fast that much. Look at their skin. Horrible. They've lost weight. Haggards, haggard faces, dark circles under their eyes, and then they need collagen and they need all of this crap because they're functioning on stimulants, not cellular energy, longevity. Great skin, great hair, great bones is based on the energy that your cells create naturally from the food that you eat and the fat that you burn, not from stimulants. Enjoy coffee, but do it the right way, not, not as a shortcut. So now that, now that you've understood fasting, you don't have to be scared about it. Like I said, there are some people who shouldn't be fasting. Use common sense, but for everyone else, break it down. Is it working for you? Great, continue. Is it too much for you? Cut down. Is it too little for you? Increase. Your body will give you biofeedback. Not, not anyone else, but your human body. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you. And also remember, using fasting as a fad, like, hey, I've overeaten lunch. I'm just going to fast now for 24 hours. You're just confusing your body more and you're creating more metabolic distress. It is not a band-aid solution for gluttony. It is not a band-aid solution for greed. Do it the right way. Simplify your lives and I can guarantee you, you are going to get those results.